My name is Eugene Chaduka. I'm the um, Chief Technology Officer for uh, Cassava Smart Tech Zimbabwe. So Cassava Smart Tech has got a play, a huge play in fintech, in insure tech, agri tech, as well as um, edu tech and health tech. But for today, the focus is on opportunities beyond COVID-19 for banks and, and fintech companies. So that's what I'll be talking about today. So in terms of the opportunities, we, we can't really talk much uh, about opportunities before we, we look at the learnings. So in terms of what we have learned of, um, over the various lockdowns, which our countries and our nations have gone through since early, early 2020. Um, we, the number one learning is on agility, which is the ability to guarantee presence uh, for, the, for the organization, but without forgetting to envision the future. So as organizations guarantee their presence with customers today, now, the vision should be about looking at the organization three years from now, five years from now. Then with agility also comes being um, informed um, and making uh, investment and planning decisions for scalability in, in, in cases of uh, catastrophes. We, we were hit uh, unprepared for, by, the, by the COVID pandemic. And um, with um, the, the pandemic, organizations had, had to quickly scale serving customers digitally and uh, serving customers remotely. Even in, inward facing, having employees work remotely, it was a new thing for, for various organizations. Then secondly, the increase in digital first. So the customer's presence um, has to be digital first. Like for, for us here at Cassava Smart Tech, we offer digital solutions to, to customers. In Zimbabwe, we process over 98% of the mobile financial service transactions, and we, we, we are deemed to be a second currency here, here in Zimbabwe because um, with EcoCash, we, we drive um, micropayments, and through those micropayments, we also drive in micro-insurance for, for the... the those who are excluded by the by the insurance um, by the big insurers, then in with the increase of a digital first um, approach, uh, there was need to greatly scale down on uh, pen to paper transactions. Um, a lot of banks have actually closed down uh, banking halls, and they no longer print the deposit or with withdrawal slips. Everything is done digital. Some even charge a premium for a customer walks into a, a banking hall to, to conduct uh, a transaction, all in a bid to, all in a bid to, to promote digital transactions. Then the role of FinTech and banks in disasters. Um, you realize that uh, country level resilience in, in, in a crisis um, was, was e improved by, by digital financial infrastructure. Um, and for us here in Zimbabwe, this is being done on, on, on an ongoing basis. Then uh, we can't talk about digital uh, without talking about cybersecurity. So much of um, daily, our daily lives has um, moved online. So fintechs and banks have seen increased fraud and uh, cybersecurity incidents, and there is need to invest and deploy resources to ensure that um, the, the security, the cyber security standing of each organization is, um, is watertight. Then um, resilience for financial infrastructure and flexibility. Um, this speaks to uh, flexibility for SMEs and individuals um, a, where financial infrastructure had to provide uh, resilience to support SMEs and, um, and individuals. Um, you realize that most of the organizations had to scale to improve, um, to increase capacity. Um, some, especially for those uh, industries which are not regulated, 
um, and uh, don't really um, prescribe that everything should be, all, all data should be stored on site. Uh, some quickly scaled into the cloud and it also presented a huge business opportunity for cloud service providers and those organizations which provide direct uh, space call location services. Um, then the last thing is on brand loyalty, which is decreasing, mainly because the digital, um, the digital customer base is full of millennials who, um, who are not loyal, but what they demand for is speed, accuracy, trans transparency, and high tech. So because brand loyalty is decreasing, um, a, a key learning there is to save customers in the way that they best want to be served. So uh, roughly one third of employees report that they want to change jobs this year. To stop the exodus, um, organizations need to make um, a number of changes in terms of um, flexibility of working hours, um, hybrid uh, working models, as well as even the remuneration um, and, uh, and other um, non-monetary um, benefits. Then persistence and resilience only come from having been uh, given the choice to work through um, difficult problems. So in terms of the actual opportunities, um, I came up with four of them, which are collaboration, uh, customer experience, uh, digital transformation and cost optimization, as well as open banking. I'll start with collaboration. So banks and fintech organizations, um, I think it's um, most of them, they are now moving into uh, being platform businesses and um, it's an API economy really. So you can't run away from collaborating with um, e-commerce service providers, health tech, insure tech, agri tech, and even prop tech. Uh, prop tech uh, service providers to make sure that we services are joint um, are jointly offered to customers and captivate a, a wider audience. Then the, um, there is um, the issue of capital injection for uh, value chain assets, uh, for example, logistics, uh, technology platforms, and um, devices. Um, the identification of startups and um, leveraging SMEs in domains outside. Um, uh, bank, uh, banking and fintech. Um, then they, uh, I'll refer um, the, the audience to a, a fulfillment example of the Amazon delivery delivery channel on that um, on that YouTube on that YouTube link that is there. Then the question is no longer um, whether customers will adopt e-commerce or contactless payment, but how easy and fast they will do that you realize that um, um, customers no longer really need to initiate the transaction. They um, ensure with the service providers, various service providers, which are banks and fintech companies, need to ensure that um, they initiate the transactions for, for the customers. So customers just need to register their, their, their uh, transactions, be it bill payments, merchant payments, schedule them, then the, the service provider the fintech uh, service provider does everything for the customer, and that speaks to to customer experience. Um, then um, we we'll also I then move to customer experience, where um, digital first solutions around products and uh, customer engagement um, will will be it will come into play. Um, there is um, the issue to do with a single identity and security, or the omni-channel experience. That means we have to onboard the customer digitally. We have to serve the customer uh, digitally in terms of um, uh, uh, failure demand, uh, um, traffic coming to various touch points, call centers, ETC. And uh, this speaks to issues to do with chatbots um, and uh, other ways of uh, saving the customer seamlessly and, and digitally. Then um, there is the issue of demand um, identification, creation and fulfillment using big data, as banks and fintech companies uh, save customers, large chunks of data um, are, are, are generated there. But it's up to the various um, service providers, banks and fintech service providers, to analyze the data and draw very um, useful insights out of the data so that um, customers um, are saved in a way that they prefer 
you create a new products and services based on the customer's requirements, uh, as well as to monetize the various services for uh, the profitability of the various organizations. Um, there is the issue of social payments uh, through banks, uh, as well as um, the, the use of the data where fintechs can identify customers, starting families, and offer customized uh, financial services, customized digital financial services. Then um, there is the opportunity to um, lobby regulatory bodies to reduce paper-based and face-to-face uh, -face interactions, um, where you find out that regulatory bodies uh, need to, to then put in um, directives which support the customer. And under customer experience, I'll, I'll also include the issues to do with uh, consumer protection there. It's, it's becoming one of the biggest um, uh, areas where regulatory bodies are going for to, go to protect the various consumers which, which we, we serve as fintech service providers. For digital transformation and cost optimizations, um, um, banks have been uh, um, able to deliver services relatively efficiently with less resources. Um, but the executives in, in those various institutions, fintechs and uh, banks, they now need to clearly uh, look at redundancies in operations, make the organizational, um, the organogram short and not tall. This ensures that um, there is speed um, and ease of decision making because speed is at the core of the future of banks and fintech service providers. Um, there is also an opportunity to accelerate the digital transformation agenda and um, uh, creating tech-driven new normal services uh, to onboard customers, to serve customers, to monetize um, services which are consumed by customers, as well as to create new services um, as the organizations keep on, keep on growing. Then um, finally on this uh, topic, there is the issue of um, cost containment and operational efficiencies uh, through the elimination of paper, the digital transformation journey, and um, automation of various processes. Um, then um, there is the major issue of open banking, which is a, a practice of uh, sharing financial information electronically, securely, and only under conditions that customers approve for. And we're talking about the API economy that I mentioned earlier, where uh, banks who in financial service and fintech service providers will um, share their APIs with um, other players in the, um, in the sector, be it um, the fintech sector, the insurtech sector, agritech, so that um, integrations um, um, drive the, the future. Um, COVID induced uh, the migration uh, to digital, uh, which resulted in enriched data sites for um, refined products and services. Then um, leveraging on open banking allows uh, for faster credit rating. This speaks to loan origination and um, even the collections to reduce the uh, non-performing loan uh, ratio. Then uh, disbursements um, of uh, operational loan to the informal sector the SMEs, ETC. Uh, so this speaks to the services which center around um, micro and nano loans. Then um, the issues to do with improved personal financial management uh, products for individuals, offering apps and um, um, bots which give financial advice to, to customers so that they know what to invest in, when to invest in, and when to invest out. Eugene, you've got about a couple of minutes. All right, I'm wrapping up. This is my last slide. So in terms of uh, banks and fintechs during and after crisis, for non-government uh, non organizations uh, under crisis, there is need for targeted flexibility uh, on payments and loans. Then in normal times, uh, there is need to customize products and pricing to drive greater financial inclusion. Then for government organizations under crisis, it's to rapidly disperse grants and loans to the broad but targeted population. Then during normal times for the government, it's about targeting welfare payments 
in subsidies for goods and services. Um, I think this is the, the end of my presentation, but the future uh, post-COVID is mainly driven by um, open APIs, um, integration and collaboration of um, uh, various entities, as well as focusing on the customer to make sure that the customer is uh, served in a digital first um, manner. Thank you very much. I'll open the floor to questions. Thank you so much, uh, Eugene. Uh, looking at my now, there are no questions that have come through, but if anything comes through uh, subsequent to your presentation or while our next speaker comes on,